I certainly didn't want to stop Peter then because I'm the next speaker. So. <laughs> I can start without the slides. Um, I want to talk today about Tafranui and the seabird restoration program, program out there, but it's really just a ruse to talk about a new way of recording information from community seabird restoration projects. Um, we've been going for 10 years at Tafranui now, and in that time the number of burrows has obviously increased. Uh, we've had a reasonable amount of success, but there's always with that a challenge of trying to measure that success, keep a record of it, and when and if I go under a bus, somebody's got a chance of picking up the information. That's about as much as I've got. I need pictures now. <laughs> One that actually works would be nice. <laughs> you just got to take all the videos off it, Chris. Just <laughs> do an interpretive dance. I'm not going to do an interpretive dance. I don't see why not. Oh, come on. Sorry. Oh. Gee, it's got nice pictures. Oh, yay. There you go. So. Tafranui Peninsula, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's just on the outskirts of the Auckland urban area. Um, and as you can see, it's a long peninsula with a whole mix of different habitat types, including quite a lot of pasture, because as well as being a regional park administered by Auckland Council, it's also an active farm and one of the most popula popular recreational spots in the Auckland area. Uh, I can't, it's broken. Sorry, I'll shout. Um, the Tafranui Open Sanctuary is just under 600 hectares. It's open to the public at all times, day and night. Uh, it was fenced with a predator-proof fence in 2004, and there were two bait drops of Brodifigan at that time, which eliminated virtually all of the pest animals within the, the park. Mice were not eliminated. Sadly, rabbits not either, but other than that, and that's been backed by an extensive network of traps and bait stations which aims to keep the peninsula predator pest free at all times. Uh, since then there's been a number of very successful reintroductions of a range of, of uh, birds, um, reptile and fish species into the park um, and there's also been a number of species that have chosen to uh, return of their own volition. One of those species is a grey-faced petrel. And in 2009, Chris Gaskin was trying out some acoustic equipment and he detected grey-faced petrel there. Um, subsequently, some war whooping found a burrow and in the burrow was a chick. Over the next couple of years, further burrows were found, uh, three or four, and the prospect came to light, of, well, maybe we could recover seabird populations onto the peninsula. Now, to take a leaf from Dave, Frost, uh, um, Dave Town's um, book, that this was considered by many to be crucial for the whole ecosystem of Tafranui and for restoring the coastal forests of Tafranui. So again, looking at the work of Towns and his, his students, we set about how to recover those seabird populations. And the first thing to consider is the proximity of other seabirds. Um, Tafranui, as you can see, juts out into the middle of the Haraki Gulf. It's not far from um, Huturu. It's not far from a number of other islands that have good seabird populations. We also thought, well, we'll stage a party, just like Dave suggested. <laughs> We'll have those parties go all night, <laughs> every night, and we'll see what turns up. And very quickly, a lot of birds turned up. We had grey-faced petrel, we had diving petrel, and we had fluttering shearwaters. They all turn up to the speakers within six months, uh, and bloody rabbits. Um, so this encouraged us enormously. After a few years, I realised that this thing could get quite big, so I'd better start recording what was going on. 
So I started an Excel spreadsheet, which I thought was the appropriate tool at the time. And you can see in each square I've recorded E for egg, if an egg was laid, C for a chick if that egg subsequently hatched, D if it died, A if it was abandoned, and F if we achieved what we hoped would be achieved, which is that it be fledged. And for each of those events, I could make notes, as you can in Excel spreadsheets. About this time we got really enthusiastic and with the help of Tim Lovegrove and others, we put in some nest boxes because Tafranui was once all grazed and the soil depth there is not very good. So we wanted to make it as easy as possible for our new visitors. Things went very well and, and within a few years we had diving petrels breeding, we had fluttering shearwaters using a number of the nest boxes. Uh, and even some penguins appeared to be happy using some of our nest boxes, even they weren't, though they weren't the target species at the time. So now, ten years later, we've got good burrowing seabird populations at a number of sites, five main sites. We've got three speaker systems shown there with the stars at Nio Bay, Marine Triangle and Elephant Point. We've got the original Nio Bay site with uh, a little dot there showing the the original burrow, uh, and we've got a small population of grey-faced petrels at Eastern Lookout. But that's what my Excel spreadsheet looks like at the moment. <laughs> and it's frankly unmanageable. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I realised I needed a different solution. And I was talking to Kerry Lukies one day and she was showing me these fantastic maps that she'd produced using the CATCH IT program, which the Auckland University Department of Statistics runs. It's set up for community pest control programs. It's got a central data storage and it's got facilities for display and analysis of your data. There's no cost at all to users. They get sponsors to help them run the program and it's used by over 100 projects. Now, I looked at this and I thought to myself, well, we can transpose these ideas, you know, catch IT to seabird IT. A trap line is really just a colony site and a trap can be a nest box or a burrow and a bait can be a seabird species and so on. The only difference being this bottom one, whereas trap lines and traps, you have a continuous rotation. So every month you've got an output, you've got an outcome. Whereas with seabirds throughout the season, you've got different statuses that changes from eggs to chicks to so forth. And at the end of each year, then you've got an outcome. So there was, there's a little bit of fiddling to be done there. So I was very excited by this and I, and I contacted Rachel Fuster at um, the Department of Statistics who runs the Catch IT program. Um, I'm pretty sure she'd already had the same idea because she didn't seem at all surprised when I turned up. In fact, she seemed very ready for me to dump all of my rubbish Excel spreadsheet on her and she was going to turn it into something useful. And this is the start of what we came up with. So, and it, I do emphasise this is still early days and there's still a few rough edges to, to, to iron out. But if you wanted to enter data for a colony site, um, in this case, Marine Triangle is the line that's the site there, and you go along each of the traps, which are nest boxes or burrows. Um, you can work out whether it's a grey-faced petrel or a fluttering shearwater, um, work out whether it's recorded, and under the catch, we've got a pull-down menu which we can record what particular activity is going on there at the time. And when you've finished your lines and you've submitted them to um, catch IT, then you can then go back in later and you can have a look at how this data comes out. And so for this one, which was for the 31st of January 2019, the end of the seabird season at Tafranui, um, we can see what the outcomes were for that year. And uh, you see we've got a mix of abandoned eggs, we've got active burrows, we've got fledged chicks and so forth. We, we decided in the end that actually seabirds worked on a financial year. And so from now on, our years, our 2019 year runs until the 1st of April 2020 and so forth. And that seems to be an easy way to do it. But this is kind of your outcome for, for that year. 
We can then present the data in a whole lot of different ways. We can look at the number of fledged chicks across Tafranui for, um, this is for greyface petrel and fluttering shearwaters combined. And you can see it talks about all time catches. We'll fix that. Um, and we can also break it down and look at, say, what the results are for nest boxes. And again, you can see that's a nice, happy trend. Um, we can also look at things that perhaps aren't quite so happy. And we can look at the number of abandoned eggs there, shown in pink. That doesn't trouble me too much because we are, after all, dealing with birds that are coming into the site, haven't bred there before, might be new breeders, might be inexperienced. So those sort of peaks in abandoned eggs is, is perhaps to be expected. The worrying one is down the end, uh, and as, you, as Eden suggested before, just because our sites are pest free, and that doesn't matter whether it's an island or a mainland site, there is always potential for a pest to get in and deal mischief. Um, I'm hoping there were no adults involved and things will go back to normal next year, but um, that was a bit of a wake-up call. The real fun with Catch IT, though, is producing maps. And this particular map shows grey-faced petrel, active burrows at Naya Bay and the Naya Bay speaker site um, over the life of the project, so over the 10 years of the project. And we can highlight an individual burrow, in that case one on a stack just off the coast, which is called NB8. I only realised later that NB stands for Naya Bay Nest Burrow or Natural Burrow. Um, <laughs> it actually stands for Naya Bay in this instant. But uh, and you can see that's been active for six seasons, uh, and we've, it's, uh, it's been active each one of those six seasons. Um, we can also look at how many chicks have fledged from those burrows. And the same burrow, we've had four fledged chicks from it in those six active seasons. And the different colourations of the, and size of the spots reflecting the number of fledged chicks coming from each, each site. And the really exciting thing is looking at the project progress overall. And this is for grey-faced petrels, fluttering shearwaters and diving petrels um, across the life of the Tafarunui restoration project. And as you can see there, we have just the one single burrow in 2009. Numbers increasing in the same sort of area. We then started developing, putting nest boxes in and starting to get some results. The nest boxes are really starting to kick in now in 2015. You see a few sites down at Elephant Point too where the um, speaker system was working. In 2017, we have a good healthy colony and that's just been confirmed this year by further activity and further breeding success. So I'm pretty happy with this new system. It looks a hell of a lot sexier than my Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Uh, and uh, hopefully will be easier to manage as well, which is just as well, because things are going a bit crazy at Tafranui. Um, so this, this block here is where all of those nest sites were that I was talking about before. Last year we had a grey-faced petrel on the coast here, successfully breeding. This year, very close to the fence, We've got fluttering shearwaters breeding there. And I suppose Chris and I and others can take a little bit of credit for these ones out here, but I think they did this all on their own. So, <laughs> um, Finally, if you and your project are interested in using Seabird IT, Rachel Fuster would be very happy to hear from you. Um, and I can't, that's her email address. I can't thank Rachel and her off-site Rishika enough. Um, you send them any questions, any data, any problems, they'll deal with it. So thank you.